Welcome to 15 Minutes in the Forest. I'm Neil Clark, Extension Forester for Southeast Virginia. What is a healthy forest understory? That's the topic for today. The understory primarily is the living organisms, uh, and in this case we're primarily focusing on plants, but uh, also those plants uh, usually have a relationship also with the fauna or the animals uh, that also uh, interact uh, with those plants in the landscape and the ecosystem. The understory uh, of a forest in the eastern United States, uh, particularly in the eastern uh, deciduous uh, hardwood forest, is one that is variable, being as these plants that are, that are in the understory have several characteristics, are either uh, plants that have developed a shade tolerance such that they can grow uh, underneath a closed canopy uh, forest which is a which is what naturally occurs in most situations if if left alone long enough usually you're going to have a closed canopy situation until you get trees of the age towards the end of their mature age that take up large areas in the forest. If those trees then begin to, to blow down or uh, die of some sort of mortality, then you open a uh, mixed light environment uh, up in the forest um, and you have a situation similar to Adam Downing's Femmelschlag uh, videos um, that he's been doing with different light environments. So you have plants that have adapted to life in the shade of the closed canopy of larger more mature trees and you have plants everywhere from herbaceous plants to small statured plants some have uh, very short uh, lifespans and other ones do have longer uh, life so much like a situation in a lawn where different grasses or other plants may tend to compete better uh, with small uh, variations in uh, soil, moisture, and light environments. Uh, you have the, that same thing in the woods uh, to a much larger extent. The light environments uh, between trees, uh, being on what side of the tree, uh, how, you know, the path of the sun and, uh, and those things. And also your soil environments vary greatly from, uh, from mineral soil or soil that might be exposed by fire uh, or on a shallow uh, mountainside. You have several tiers of plants in the forest understory. Uh, you have herbaceous small plants that grow in the first, say, foot or so of the forest floor. Then you have you know, your shrub layer that may go three to six feet. Um, then you have your maybe younger perennials, your younger trees, woody stems. Uh, that may go you know, 20, 30 feet, uh, of course, up to maturity, and all of these things. And uh, then you have vines and bryophytes and, and other uh, levels and layers of, of plants in the understory. And of course, use the term healthy. So what, what is a healthy forest understory? There's no one definitive measure of health. In general, we tend to say, think of health as being an understory or a forest that has a diversity of components, right? A diversity of age. Uh, if, if one thing is dominant, uh, it's either because we managed for it, it, it outcompetes everything, maybe like a, an invasive type species situation uh, to, the, to the detriment of, of other species. So. so this doesn't appear to be a big problem for much of Virginia. Bracken fern, hay-scented fern, and other associated rhizomatic ferns uh, have occupied large acreages in some areas and due to their rhizomatic spread are very difficult to control. A sporadic batch here and there is not an issue, but when complete coverage of areas occurs while making it useful for temporary wildlife cover can also limit other plant or tree reproduction from seed. Uh, in general, we're looking at the greatest variation uh, we can. And we also look for things that, that are expected in a natural forest ecosystem. The, the usual example we think of in, in forestry is the areas of, of 
the country where hunting is greatly restricted and white tailed deer numbers are far beyond carrying capacity and not other uh, food sources. There are areas of the country where you can see a definite browse line, a six foot browse line through the forest uh, where deer have eaten everything, cleaned up everything in, in a forested situation. Uh, and so obviously that's not a, a healthy uh, forest situation, uh, not from a forest management point of view, uh, more from a from a wildlife management point of view. Here in Virginia, we don't tend to, to have uh, that in, in too many areas uh, that I'm aware, but we have, we have other issues, uh, primarily invasive species uh, issues or areas that uh, do not get type of management or natural or, or allow natural systems to take place, such as fire, um, as, as has happened in the past. But so we have different layers. We have the, uh, the herbaceous layer, and uh, there are a list of different plants uh, that, that take up that layer here, kind of in the middle of this, uh, this fern area, uh, just to show, uh, you know, how you can get complete coverage in some areas. And then you have uh, mid-story. So uh, over here to the left, you can see some uh, blueberry uh, here. Here we have some small trees. We have uh, musclewood, American hornbeam. Uh, that also tells you this is a wet area. Uh, the mosquitoes buzzing around my head may also tell you this is a wet area. And then there are many other layers uh, there. Also underneath, uh, I see some Virginia creeper. Also down here, there's some grape vine and uh, poison ivy vine and, and several other vine species that start out uh, low level, um, ground level. And then as this area were to be opened up uh, to sunlight, we'll likely grab a hold of one of these stems start to to climb and then 40 50 years from now uh, the the foliage of of that same vine uh, will be will be in the upper canopy so the importance of the forest understory um, um, for one it can be a good food source uh, for animals and particularly we think about uh, the easiest one to think about is the white-tailed deer uh, who like a, much like a goat uh, tends to eat uh, browse, what we call browse, so vines, uh, small branches, twigs, and, and some leaves um, as part of their, uh, their diet since they're ruminants. Then we also have other uh, large mammals. Um, you know, we have your bear. You have a bear tend to eat more insects and grubs and, uh, and also a good amount of berries, so uh, what we call soft mast. Uh, so when we see a lot of these wild grapes and things like that, that's good for bears. Uh, also, certain of the trees uh, that tend to, to shred, shed their fruits uh, are good, uh, both soft and hard mast. Something like a tupelo uh, that has a soft mast, a lot of soft mast, uh, cherry trees, black cherry. There are also other you know, mammals would be your um, foxes and your raccoons and possums uh, also eat various amount of vegetation from the from the forest floor. Second thing we think about when we're considering we're trying to evaluate uh, the forest understory is the potential for future regeneration and we have whole uh, other videos on uh, regeneration and from those videos you probably learned that in the hardwood forest a, a middle-aged hardwood forest a large amount of the uh, future regeneration uh, is going to come from stump sprouts. Uh, however, in a more mature forest uh, or a forest that is um, allowed to go through uh, a successional series, um, you will have uh, gaps where uh, what we call advanced forest regeneration. So some of these trees that grow in the understory for decades maybe then are released uh, to sunlight uh, do um, compete well and and become the next forest canopy then the third value or benefit of the forest understory uh, is in the diversity and and the food food sources species richness um, of the forest most most plants are there uh, for a reason and uh, and there's usually some other organisms, whether they be uh, you know, other animals and other organisms that rely on 
specific plants in the understory. So some of the common plants we have in the understory across Virginia uh, would be, say, greenbrier, scientifically referred to as Smilax genus. Uh, there's about uh, over a dozen species in Virginia, and they are a pest for people trying to walk through the woods. However, that same uh, deterrent that causes people to walk through also uh, decreases uh, predation for certain species. So bird species, uh, per se, uh, or small uh, animals may may like to nest amongst that uh, because it keeps out hawks and and other predators um, from from getting to their nests or uh, just a place to rest for a while. Greenbrier also has fruits uh, that are widely consumed by uh, lots of birds and mammals alike. And the actual greenbrier vine is frequently um, consumed or browsed. Uh, by white-tailed deer and and like a lot of plants the uh, greenbrier foliage is host to uh, many larval species of, of caterpillar uh, which again are important food sources for other animals. Many of these understory plants also um, as plants do have flowers and so uh, they are important for pollinators. You will also notice uh, blueberries, vaccinium is the genus. Many species in the eastern forest uh, as well as blackberries. Uh, those are on a vine, <laughs> usually with thorns. Again, uh, wildlife uh, love the soft mast and also the protection provided by the viney, uh, clumpy vines. Uh, you will see blueberries growing in the understory in the shade. Uh, you usually will not see blackberries uh, until you have a uh, very open area. Uh, it needs a good amount of sunlight for blackberry uh, brambles to grow. And we look over here, there's a large yellow poplar, which indicates some point in history, this uh, was an open area. Yellow poplar being a primary uh, secessional species, would have had to have been open sun However, right next door, nearby, we have an American beach, which indicates usually a sign of forest that has had some shade for some period, and another space and another beach there. So as we go deeper into the woods, uh, more beach, and then I think we have an oak. So a lot of mature trees here. And then if we go this way, we have some small, medium-sized yellow poplars. And then here in the understory, we have about an eight, 10 foot uh, hickory that's less than one inch in diameter. So in the mid-story, uh, sweet gum in the mid-story. So a various uh, variation of species of sun and shade and also various layers. Uh, we have vines uh, back here. We, had, we have here a grapevine, a wild grape. So going up here where there was sunlight into the tree. And so forests uh, folks who grow trees for wood, not a huge fan of grapevines, but uh, pro do provide a nice amount of soft mass in the upper canopy for birds and whatnot for certain times of year. So this is a pretty good mix here and would call this a fairly healthy forest understory. Here we see the understory of an area that's been burned probably last year. Uh, judging by the needle still on the ground, not that recently. Got some ferns coming back and a little bit of mid-story. Uh, fairly successful in working back the mid-story 
if you have very vigorous uh, mid-story trees though burning may not recapture that site looking across the street this is a more open area let me go down here and the canopy is similar here's an area that's been thinned not long ago it hasn't been burned in a while and you can compare the understory here in here ways a lot of American holly duff layer is fairly thick so this hasn't been burned in a little while thank you for joining us for 15 minutes in the forest make sure you tune in again on June 16th when Karen Snape will go over making your own charcoal and biochar. Have a joyful journey.